Hey there, everybody, and uh, let me stop the stream and unmute Justin because that's the proper way to deal with uh, your co host. Hello, everybody, <laughs> welcome back to Pinball <laughs> Storytellers, our uh, storytelling show. Uh, and this is gonna be a small, kind of Twitch exclusive thing where we're gonna talk about what kind of happened uh, in the past with uh, the last couple of sessions of Pinball Storytellers because, oh, people on YouTube already know this. They have the players just before them. But let's talk to Twitch. Justin, what happened on Beauty and the Beast, part one and two? Uh, well, in part one, we went to... Uh, well, the, the father and his three daughters that he was trying to marry off went to a, uh, a trade fair. And he managed to kind of marry the oldest two off. Uh, turns out one of them had a really strong head for business. Um, and one of them uh, managed to find the attentions of a uh, retiring soldier who had went to a war, been promised land, came back from the war alive, actually got his land. Uh, she's going to become a, a farmer, farmer's wife. On the way back, they were waylaid at a, a magical castle. Well, at a castle. It was not apparently magical, but it was a castle they'd never seen before despite living... Apparently, I left my piano on. Thanks for telling me about that, Krebs. Um, <laughs> and um, through some machinations on the part of the father and the youngest daughter, who really wanted to take some roses from the garden, and the father was forced to leave his daughter behind in the castle. And pretty much all of episode two was about how she uh, started wandering around the castle and finding out some things. Uh, naming all of the furniture and all of the various yes. other sentient little bits of, of uh, objects. The most important and uh, famous, of course, is the notebook we got that basically keeps track of all of the names of the things. Basically me saying to Justin, okay, now you need to keep track of all the names I said. <laughs> <laughs> and the notebook's name is Fama. Yeah, which is honestly the only one I remember. <laughs> 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 because, I mean, why wouldn't you remember that? It's such an easy name to remember. I think um, the wardrobe was named Queen. Uh, that makes sense. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. Anyway. There were some awkward conversations about, you know, sleeping in a sentient bed. And uh, and and the bed turned out to be a angry black lady with uh, extremely jealous. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure how we got there, but we got there. It made sense at the time. It made sense. It's a black mahogany bed with a black personality. Very de independent woman. And I think that's, I think that's where we are. So, oh, also there was a, there was a library uh, with some very interesting properties. The, uh, the books have to be occasionally dictated. Um, not dictated. Basically, what he does is he has a magic mirror, and he uses the magic mirror to view books at a distance, and then he dictates what the books say, and other books write themselves in the and library. We so also his library is constantly growing. We also found out the fact that the mirror isn't necessarily only for books. You can kind of watch even everything and anything through it. It's true. Which is kind of kind of nice. Kind of nice. I see a lot of practical. Um, Practical fins with that. <laughs> Detectives and police are kind of going extinct after that. After I just take out, out the castle and we produce it in mass. <laughs> yeah, it's just, we're just going to mass produce the magic the magic view everything mirror. Yeah. That's, uh, that seems plausible. Okay. So Can you imagine though? Can you imagine a world in which a view everything mirror existed and it was mass producible? So I would either imagine... With our constant world, if we had something like that, it would immediately be like under rocks to put it like that. Anybody having it would would be just put it like this. It, it would disappear in a matter of a year or even less than that. I'm just trying to think how you would like. I guess you could. You still have biometrics, right? Because just because you can see someone's like eye in their retinal pattern doesn't mean you can reproduce it. So all security would have to be carried out through like not passwords. Passwords would no longer be functional. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It's it's a weird it's a weird to think about that. It's basically saying what if anybody in the world could see what you are doing at all times. I think that would make us better human beings, but extremely more unhappy. I can agree with that. So like you know you know when we were a child and this idea pops into your head and you think, wait, what would mother say or what, what would she do to me if I actually go over with this? And eventually you just you just start like as a child, if you have parents that actually care about you and raise you, um, you start feeling that thing in the back of your head like, wait, what do they think about this? Is this right? Is this wrong? And this is this would basically be the feel of every human being on the world. It's like, wait, what? What would they think about me? It's basically Facebook. Like it's it's literally Facebook where you just post where everything is posted without your consent. There's that. Also, there wouldn't be like the the porn industry would go away. Yeah. You can just yeah. Remote view actual people having sex all the time. I think boundaries would not be as. Uh... Uh, boundaries would be a, a thing of the past. Definitely. But the funny thing is, um, how would people come to trust each other? Like, how do you see somebody else's? Do you need to know their names? Do you need to know their location? Do you need to give coordinates? How do you do that? I don't know. Anyway, that's all we'll talk about that. So, we're gonna jump back just one second and the screen, play the intro. And we're gonna come back with the actual episode. Again, this was just a Twitch special thingy, so we can tell you guys what's happened in the past couple of weeks, uh, well, month and something, <laughs> with pinball storage is, uh, so we can have all up to date. I did not know everything that was mentioned here, so that's why I asked Justin to do this, so I can recap as well. Okay, so jumping back into the title screen, coming right back up, guys. Okay, give me one. Okay, and welcome back everybody to Pinball Storytellers. Uh, this is our... <clears throat> this is our pinball. Uh, uh, I'm blabbering, Justin. <laughs> Welcome to Pinball Storytellers, where uh, where we try and tell you uh, familiar stories with unfamiliar ends in the uh, context of D and D, which is a role playing system. Nailed it. Nailed it. Done. Okay, so let's talk about uh, episode three of Beauty and the Beast here on our channel. So let's see what. Yes. Uh, for the record, we thought this was going to be a one-episode story when we started it, and it yes. just kept growing and growing and, and growing. It, one month and a half later, we're still mm -hmm. doing this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Justin, uh, jump me into the your world. Uh, okay, so you have you you were put in charge of the garden. I remember he taught you how to. Um, take care of the, the roses and you were very flattered and he gave you access to the library and he showed you what he does with the mirror so every so often from that point onward you can uh, you you know you take care of the the garden I assume you keep I talking take to the care, furniture yeah. yeah I keep talking to furniture um, eventually as I said I try and uh, I, I basically besides that I spend a lot of time with Beast okay he spends um, a lot of the time that you didn't know where he was before. Uh, you, you now you can come in the library and you see him dictating uh, books to uh, the blank blank books in the library. In the library, it's, yeah, it's it's actually pretty impressive. He goes through maybe a book a day. Sometimes he's talking so fast that you can't even understand what he's saying, but the books seem to get it. Uh, sometimes he's speaking in languages you don't know. I will be extremely inquisitive of stuff, like as I've been until now. 
can ask him yeah. like what's that language what's what are you doing <clears throat> and uh let's see what I... ah this this is a um this is a, a new philosophical treatise in its uh, Latin, and it's uh, it's building on the the work of Thomas of Aquitaine, trying to prove prove the existence uh, uh, of God through logical uh, constructions. Ah, your father told me something about Latin, but uh, I don't know any word. Oh, I know one. It was pretty popular with uh, the girls in school. Uh, they all used to say carpe diem. <laughs> uh, carpe diem. Seize the day. Yes, yes, that's it. That's, um, that's good advice, I suppose. Depending on how many days you have left. I put a hand on his shoulder. Come on, leave this book here. Let's go outside. Let's take a let's take a walk. Uh, okay. He sort of lumbers to his feet. Uh, looks down at you. It says ladies first. And I start kind of skipping around. Like saying hello to each of the items that I each of the pieces of furniture as I go along. And you hear him uh, lumbering behind you, you know, this long steps. Thunk, thunk, thunk. And I look at him up and down. Does he look like? Does he look like a beast, or does he look like a very hairy human? He's humanoid. His um his knees are bent the wrong direction, which is one of the reasons he has these really really long strides. Mm -hmm. Um, he's wearing clothes, uh, but. It seems like they're very puffed up, so you might assume that there's fur underneath there that's sort of holding the clothing away from his body, which makes it look kind of strange. Um, in, th in theory, you could imagine that the hair on his face is like a big shaggy beard, but it looks slicker, more uh, uh, glossy than, than normal human facial hair, in your experience. Um... As we, I mean, as, as he we does have outside. he does have uh, he has cat like eyes. So as we go outside, I'll say, you know, you took me into this world that I knew nothing about it, and now I really feel like at home. Would you? That's that's good considering this is your home now. I smile at him. Would you want to go to the city? You want me to show the city? You show you the city? It's pretty nice. You, I think you'll enjoy it. He, um, like, flinches slightly back and uh, says, I can't leave the castle. It's perfectly safe here. I haven't seen a human being in, well, well, my father was the last one I saw besides you. Well, and all the items in the house, but or the castle, but I guess we can't count on that, can we? Yes, yeah, so only you and father. Come on, I can like, like grab his arm and kind of start tugging. It's it's only for a couple of hours. He um, he looks at you sadly, and he walks sort of to the uh, the edge of the grounds and just um reaches under the cuff of his shirt and rips uh, some hair off. So you see him pull out this big hunk of, uh, of fur and he throws it into the air in the direction away from the castle off the grounds and at some point it crosses a line and bursts into flame. <gasps> what happened? I told you. I can't leave the castle. No oh. part of me can go into the mortal world. Well, who? Why? He starts talking, um, but you don't understand the words. It sounds like gibberish. It's, 
in a the the a、uh, uh, uh. are you talking Latin again? No, it's very complicated. Well, I mean, I'll be living here for a very long time. We have the time. Come on, let's walk. He sort of follows along behind you. Mm -hmm. And I continue on asking him, like, "Tell me the story." It's not like I have something else better to do. Yeah, he. Every time he tries to tell you,、uh, it just sounds like gibberish, like he's speaking in tongues.、Um, I can eventually, I, he gets. I, eventually, I he gets a brilliant. He gets a good idea, and he like he gets a stick and like clears a space so there's just dirt, and he tries to write it down, but he ends up. Drawing what looks like a circle with a triangle in it, and it's he gets frustrated and breaks the stick. I look at him and I say, "Let me guess. Come on, this is going to be a good game. I guess, and if I'm right, you nod your head. If I'm not, you just shake your head. Curse." Yeah. He tries to nod his head. It looks like he's trying to nod his head, but it also kind of looks like maybe he has an itch, like a flea. He's kind of like convulsing. Kind of like look at him.、Uh, you okay? Sure, of course. Why wouldn't I be okay? So, is it a curse? Again, with the、uh, the head shaking and the convulsions. Do I take that as a yes? So I, I can't ask you direct questions about this. Maybe indirect questions. Is my last statement true or not? <laughs> Same thing. Wow. He he's trying to figure that one out. He looks confused. And then. Because, because literally your last statement was I can't. Yeah. So like,、um, can I basically like, is my last statement correct that I can't ask you direct questions? It's not directly. Okay. So he'll nod yes. That's fine. Hmm. Okay. So say that somebody was in a situation like yours. Would you name that situation as being cursed? Hypothetically. Okay, we're getting somewhere. And would this curse be caused by a witch? Hypothetically. Okay. Well, this is a bit frightening, to be honest. But、um, and what would you say that? This man did to deserve such a fate. I'm not sure anyone can deserve such a fate. I grab his hand, like with my, one of my hands, and I say, "What did the man do?" With like big eyes looking at him. I. I And he goes into convulsions again. I stop. Okay, okay I'll stop. I'll stop. And I、uh, just like do this to his face. Want to go back inside? Please. Come on. You can tell me more about that、uh, Latin book he had. Maybe teach me a couple of words. Of course. Okay. Teach you anything you want to know. I'd be more interested in teaching what teaching you teaching me what you want to know. You, you get my drift. Yeah. It took him a second. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we spend the day kind of doing this. I'll take him outside and do the same questions like each couple of days. 
that every couple of days they're gonna try and indirectly figure out a bit more about why he's here, why is he in the state, and so on. You don't really make a lot of progress. Anytime it seems like you're uh, getting to the core of the matter, to like who cursed him or why, or um... I will actually start like talking to the books, talking to. Um, I, so what I do with Fairma, I will try and find the oldest resident of the castle. Okay. And I have I have a teacup with me. So, because some of them can't speak, so she can translate. And I'll try to find the oldest resident in the castle. Eventually, well, eventually, uh, you manage to find like a sub sub basement, and in the far corner is um, literally like the foundation stone of the castle, the very first stone that was uh, the laid down mm -hmm. when the castle was built and um it can't talk but it has like the the date on it of the date it was first planted and it can carve words into itself and then erase them kind of like an etch-a-sketch i'll try i'm gonna ask the same questions to it as well so i'm gonna try and approach it and uh with kindness can ask uh can ask um teacup is it okay if i Ask him right out. Do I need to be polite or anything? No, just remember stones are very grumpy. They have all that weight on them all the time. It's stressful. Hmm, I think. Uh, maybe if I... Maybe if I polish it, I would be happier? I don't know. No one's ever tried polishing them. I asked the stone, Dear stone, would you like to be polished? Or, I'm good at painting. I could paint something on you nice. And words flash across the surface of the stone. Polish? Why? So I can be shiny in this dismal, dank hole? Hmm. I open my notebook and I name four or five um, kind of like lightning fixtures from there. Kind of oh, like Jack, Simon, <laughs> and I just do that. Uh, you got some uh, some candelabras, sort of shooting their way down the stairs. I name a table. They're like racing and... towards you. One of them manages to get a little bit further ahead than the others by like pointing his candles away from him and burning them really hot. He gets there first, and he's like, you called? You called? I got here first, you called? And I'll head, yes! Um, a f foundation stone here. Um, stone, would you like a name? It, he doesn't respond. There's no text being written. I'm gonna call you Gary. You are Gary? I've never met anyone named Gary. What kind of name is Gary? Uh, your name, if you like it. Doesn't sound very strong. Hmm. What about? Ooh, I I heard, I heard about this legend, a Greek. There was this giant that used to keep all of the weight of the world on its back, Atlas. What do you think about that? Hmm. Atlas. The weight of the world. Yes, Atlas is much better than Gary. If you're if I'm gonna have to tolerate you giving me a name, I guess Atlas will do. I smile at him. Oh, that's good. You stand over there. You stand over there. I can start shout out for some uh, prants inside of the castle that uh, are night prants, so they don't need sunlight. Okay. I could, and I start. Like, I put a table somewhere. I put a couple of these prants. I hang the candelabras, and I say, "So over there, out now. Better? Not so dismal." It looks much less like a cave. 
I think I'll paint a picture for you. Hang it on that wall over there. Oh, that was. So you, you can know how he looks like. Very well. And I spent the day kind of just talking to him, not mentioning this at all. Like my my, I basically am trying to bribe him. So when I expose my material motive, I have incentive. So I just spend the time talking to him, chatting with the other um, lighting fixtures and everything else in in the room. Um, I eventually get a couple of. Uh, what do you call them? Brooms to dust off the place and so on. And I go to the library. I, I use the magical mirror to find a painting of uh, Atlas. And I'll use, if there's any kind of magical parchment, use to draw it on there. So make basically a canvas of Atlas and frame it. A frame you, it. Could you could find a canvas. That wouldn't be difficult at all. Mm hmm. I'll frame it, and next day I'll bring it over on there. Okay. And ask, so, Atlas, I wanted to ask something. Yes? What do you know about this castle? Right, you're the oldest one here. Nobody knows much, they only remember waking up as the items they are. What do you remember? I remember um, well, I remember when this castle was built. Who Almost. built it? Is he silent? He doesn't say anything. I'm trying to think. Um I'm completely out of the rails, and I. He. Instead of words flashing across, the um, the surface of the stone. He, shows you uh, an image of a uh, tall man. Sort of, uh, chipping, out the stone from a quarry and dragging it having it shipped across the uh, the countryside and another man laying it down and you uh, you recognize some of the the marks on the corners of the stone uh, as belonging to atlas and you see a great castle growing up around the stone and you see a uh, a lordly man um whose wife uh, dies in childbirth. And you see him getting older. And you see the, the son getting older. But the son seems very with, withdrawn from the world. Um, and then one day uh, another woman comes in to the picture, makes friends with the son. He's older now. Mm hmm And then it almost dissolves. It blurs. And the next thing you know, there's the beast and the castle. And then the image goes away entirely and it's just smooth rock again. Can you show me who was it that cursed beast? Well, cursed Justin to be as he is. A reference for those who don't remember Justin is Beast's name. <laughs> <laughs> just so we're, just so we don't get confused and call him something else. Um, and for a second, the that that same girl that was uh, the son's friend is there for just a moment, and then it's gone again. A what? Sorry. The, the girl son? That, that was the son's friend. Like, her visage is there for a second on the rock again, and then it's gone. Hmm. Thank you, Atlas. And do you know 
how you can break the spell. And um, words flash across the uh, the surface of the stone. It says, uh, "Curses can be funny things. Generally, any talented individual who casts a curse will make it impossible for people to talk about it." Oh, that makes but, sense. Uh, talking's just words. There are things that aren't words. Well, I'm not quite sure I understand that, Sathos. He doesn't respond. Well, thanks, anyway. You've been a lot of help. I'll visit, I'll visit you each three days, and we'll talk. Every three As days. You. As you wish. You like it? And I point to the painting I made for him. It gives one something to aspire to. I pet the rock. See you later, Atris. Okay. And I go back to Beast. And I just spend um, I just spend my time with him, and I'm not gonna try and like take out any more information for him. I'm just gonna say that I know what happened. Uh, Atlas told me. I not sure I understand, but I know. His his first question is, who the hell's Atlas? I I give him Fiamma. You should really read this more, they're a lot happier, and the place feels like... So, when I first got in here, everything was weird. I, um, I was scared about, like, all the items, smiling, being just like humans. And they're actually they're good people, and you have a city in your castle. You have a whole people in here they don't look like humans they don't look like you or me but they have feelings they're people and they deserve a name and I show like show him Fama and show him all the names and I tell him you should talk to them more even your bed she's quite a lady Mm. Well, I don't know if I'd I use lady, but still. Don't like the idea that my bed was a lady and I was sleeping in her for all those years. Well, I mean, I don't like the fact that you took me away from my father and had to spend all my life now here, but now I like it. I feel like I wouldn't have been happy with anybody else hmm. I'm just saying that you don't need to be so lonely you have you have friends in here he takes a uh, fama away from you and starts reading the uh, the names I give him the pen that I used to write in fama when I write not when fama writes and say look give Name something, anything, just one thing today, that had, doesn't have a name yet. And I'll leave him be for the rest of the day, spend the time outside tending to the garden. Okay. Well, just as you're leaving the, uh, the library, you actually see him, like, look at his favorite uh, candelabra, the one that's always sitting next to his chair when he's doing his work with the mirror and the books, and says you shall be named shiny I can look back oh and also ask them if they like their names oh um do you like your do you like the name shiny shiny kind of edges away very confused <laughs> uh yes yes shiny I'm, I mean I am shiny so 
That makes sense. I smile and I just giggle under my breath a bit and leave him be. Okay, so... I don't see what else I'll be doing differently unless anything happens. I'll be doing this the basically every day, every three days visit Atlas and talk to him about stuff. Bring him, every time bring him something new to decorate the room. A painting, a book, a flower, just anything. And I'll, I'll keep on uh, just making Beast name some stuff and actually talk to uh, his items. And that's about it. Okay. Beast gets more and in more into the the spirit of things. He starts calling things by name and <laughs> naming things that don't have names yet. Sometimes you'll catch him in like a room that's usually not very used, and he'll be going around and trying to sort of talking aloud to himself, being like, "Now, what would this be called? Not really a Martha. Maybe more of a Jennifer." No, no, no. And then he'll like he'll talk to a, a coat a coat rack and be like, "You're kind of like a Steve, right?" I just um, I just he never does it around you though. No, oh, okay. Whenever I see him doing this, like I spy him by by chance. I just watch him, smile at him, try and be kind of circumspect and not uh, jump off seemingly like I, I'm just passing by if he sees me okay. if he, whenever he notices you he uh, gets embarrassed and immediately stops as I said I could just walk by okay um, and I'll ask one day I'll ask the foundation stone I'll ask Atras when is Beast's birthday birthday uh, the day he was born. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's say it's like November fourteenth. Mm. He's kind of a Scorpio. That makes sense. What? What date are we in? Let's see. The the Leipzig Fair is in late spring. You're coming into the tail end of summer, so you're probably mid-September at the moment. So not that much until there. No, not at all. Okay, so for the following uh, couple of months, like besides doing what I just said, I will be organizing with um, every item and that I can find that interested in doing this. Um, I'm gonna be very careful to not approach items that have a too much of an open mouth and it will tell him a birthday party for him okay well he's very surprised uh, when you guys have a, a huge birthday party for him and he actually might even like look a little at first he looks a little angry at the furniture he's like you're not supposed to surprise me and then he looks at you like but i guess you didn't really have a choice well if it wasn't a surprise it wouldn't be as fun and i kind of like jump at his neck with my arms like this and kind of hug him tight uh, yeah puts his arm shandy i says i am um, i can't remember the last time anyone celebrated my birth. Well, we can remember it tomorrow. Now, leave it. You know, mm. carpe diem. Wow, that just that just jumped in so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he grins down at Bell. And, uh, sort of literally seizes Bell and, like, picks her up and spins her around, being like, Indeed. I will try I uh, use the magic mirror to find a cook making a cake and I'll try my best with the people and the like the items in the um kitchen to make a cake, a birthday cake. Okay. The uh, the oven looks at you a little funny. This person I I I know how to make a cake. I'm an oven. 
Oh. Oh, okay, sorry. I just... He said nobody really made his birthday, so I thought he didn't know how to make a cake. Well, he didn't tell me to make a cake. Okay, well, can make one now. Do your best. The oven has no trouble making a cake. No trouble whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We make a cake, we do cake, we have fun. And as, as I said, it's going to be it until unless, unless anything special happens. It's a delicious cake. He makes it a little. He make, honestly, the cake's a little too big. There's no way two two people can finish this cake. It's like a seven tiered cake, uh, with some buttercream frosting, and it's each layer is different. Yet it's like a, a, a sort of a sweet lemon cake, um, a chocolate cake, something that looks like red velvet, but uh, is a little bit sweeter, a little bit lighter, not as dense. Yes, I look at beast. You know, c can you control like where the the castle jumps to? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It has places it wants to be at certain times, and the rest of the time it doesn't really care. I have an idea. I think you're gonna love it. And I tell him to jump me to a specific location somewhere where I know that an orphanage is. Okay. Uh, he like looks near at it, of like, course. You know that's you know that's 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 near people, right? Uh, are you sure? Don't worry, just in a forest somewhere close. I'll come back, but you'll love this. Trust me, you like it. Okay. By the way, this is like the day after this is not a birthday. That's fine. You wake up. You wake up the next day, and uh, the castle's in a new place. I will take the cake and all the food, basically that I can carry, from the kitchen, and take it to the orphanage. And I tell Beast to watch me through the mirror. Oh, that's really adorable. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you get to the orphanage. The kids are sort of like. They're dirty and they they look hungry and they look see you coming up the road and they're looking at you funny and they're like, "Hey lady, hey lady, what you got? What you got? What you got?" Uh, well, let's see. We have a couple of roasted chickens. We have fresh baked uh, loaves of bread. Uh, this is banana bread and this is chocolate bread and this is a seven layered cake. We only need just a bit of it. We didn't have enough people at the party, so I thought that I. I thought that some more people uh, enjoying my friend's, my special friend's birthday. His name is Justin. And you just remember that as you eat all of this. And I kind of like put it down. Come on, don't be shy, take it. So the kids' eyes go really, really big and they're like, their jaws drop. And they've never seen so much food in one place. Or even heard of half of the things you just said. Um, <laughs> but uh, they... They like start digging into it. They don't even think about it. They just start grabbing handfuls of food. Before, and shoving before it into they their go, mouth. come on, come, come to me a bit, come to me a bit, like kind of form like a half circle, uh, look towards the direction of the castle, and say, "Come on, at free, say happy birthday, Justin." And at one, two, three, and I, happy birthday, Justin. Hey, come on, go, go eat. Little high pitch voices. Yeah, so they're just, they're just shoving food into their mouths. And like they'll take a bite of the cake. The kids who take a bite of the cake are like, are like oh, What is this, Patrick? Why is this so good? I'm just going to stay around there about 15 minutes or so, kind of enjoying this. And then I'll go back to the castle. Right. After they're, um, after some of the kids are done eating, like, they've stuffed themselves full and they, they think they might vomit. They start um, getting up and running around you like randomly asking you questions like where are you from and who's Justin and why does he have all this extra food and... I say I'm, I'm from uh, whatever the town I was from and okay. Justin is a uh, he's That's a really far away he's a prince he's uh, he's got this very big castle beautiful so many people inside of it so many good people and uh, 
we just had a lot of food extra from his birthday party, and we wanted to share it with somebody. Oh. Are you a princess, then? Are you, are you, are you his wife? He shake my head. Um... Why not? What's wrong with him? Nothing. I... Then why, why won't you marry him? Don't you love him? He has all his food! Look! Look at all the food! I, I kinda what go more could you want I, in a guy? I, I go completely red in the cheeks when... <laughs> says don't you love him and I say that it, I don't know what's gonna happen the, f the future is uncertain adults make no sense well sometimes we do sometimes you don't No sense at all. I'm just blabbering. I'm literally just like, I'm red in the face after that question, and I'm kind of like extremely shy. I, I kind of like dropped into shy right now. <laughs> Basically, if I were watching myself, I would just roll on the ground laughing. <laughs> okay. Well, as soon as you start rolling on the ground laughing, the kids are like, oh, that's a great game, and they pile on top of you, and then they all roll on the ground laughing too. <laughs> Okay, guys, I need to go. Uh, come on, say, say goodbye to Justin. Um, good, goodbye, Justin. Okay, thank kids. Have a good time. I kind of like give them each a kiss on the cheek. And um, if I if I do have any more coins left, I think I had some coins for my father. Yeah, you do. I kind of like give each of them one. <gasps> Their eyes go big again. This is even better than food! And I'll go back to the castle. I want to see what Justin's reaction is. Um, <clears throat> Justin uh, meets you at the uh, the entrance to the castle. And he has uh, the hair around the hair around and just underneath his eyes is like slicked down as if mm -hmm. it was wet. And he has a, uh, and underneath his nose, almost as if he had been crying, um, but managed to sort of wipe it up and stop, get a hold of himself before you got back. And he, uh, he looks at you a little desperately, actually. Like his eyes are, are big, and he's breathing heavy. I go stand on his knee and give him like a big hug across his neck. I don't know what you get you for your birthday. I thought that was a good as gift as any. Did you, did you mean what you said to the children? Yes. You think in the future that maybe... I smile. And I give him a kiss, uh, a kiss on the forehead. More than maybe. And the, uh, the beast pulls a uh, little little felt box out of his pocket. And he gets down on one knee in front of you, and he, which is still basically leaves him at eye level. Yep. But <laughs> he uh, he opens the box, and there's a uh, there's enormous. Uh, diamond ring. My eyes go wide. And he just, he looks at you. Again, with that same desperate slash hopeful look in his face. I nod my head. And I take the ring. Do you put the ring on? I give him to put the ring on me. He puts the ring on you and he sort of awkwardly bends down and tries to kiss you with his snout. I, I kiss him and then I give him a hug and I whisper in his ear, My beautiful prince. Well, as, you, as your lips touch, something... Uh, now, this is an important question. Does Belle kiss with her eyes open or closed? Closed. Okay, close. So as you kiss him, um, 
something changes, a chiming of bells, and you feel this intense brightness against your eyes as if you, you know, the feeling you get when you look into the sun, even though your eyes are closed, you can see where it is. Have you never kissed anybody? And your, and your hands um, like that were gripping the beast are suddenly like just gripping cloth. As as if never having kissing kissed anybody, she's gonna just expect this is this is what happens when you kiss somebody. <laughs> Every time you kiss someone, yeah, it's just yeah, this, is like, this is like the first time. This is like, this is what happens, and I do the same thing. I just like hug him and I whisper into his ear, "My beautiful prince." Right. Did you open your eyes at any point? Uh, yeah, after a couple of seconds, maybe it's gonna be a long right. hug. A long hug. Well, after you uh, open your eyes, you're holding a, uh, a naked man because the uh, the clothes he was wearing are just just puddled around him. You're holding you're holding the clothes, but they were so loose on uh, on this this person that they just sort of fell off. I look at him, and, and he's I can understand. He looks like happened. a perfectly normal, attractive man. I start laughing my ass off. <laughs> he blushes. He's like, and sort of like grabs grabs the pants that fell down and sort of wraps them around his waist and ties them in a knot. He's like, "What's so funny?" You have so many books around here, and you've never thought to tell me that your curse is about love. I could have gotten you back to this in months ago. I I can't talk about it. Well, you could have said something. I tried. I kept trying. I give him a little kiss. It doesn't matter now. Come on, let's show your friends. Your new look. You are quite dashing. I think your bed is going to be uh, just a bit upset. She liked you when you were bigger. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh wow, that that joke works on a lot of levels. Okay, uh, moving yep. along. Yep. So you, uh, he looks at you, um, he looks at you a little sadly. What happened? Nothing. Um, I'm afraid the magic's gone. And the curse. Oh. Well, I could have said something before, dummy. I would have wanted to say goodbye. I didn't... I didn't expect you to say yes. <laughs> you dummy. Well, anyway, maybe some parts of the magic are still there. And I pick up Fema and I start, like, rushing through the castle, saying goodbye to everybody. Hmm. Beast. Uh, well, I guess not the beast anymore. Justin races along behind you. Talking about myself in the third person. Yep. <sighs> And I'll just say goodbye to everybody, even if I don't get a response. And I say... Nothing responds to you. Nothing's moving. Does the it castle seems like... move anymore? I mean, the castle's... It's not like the castle's constantly moving. Are you asking the beast? Are you asking Justin if the castle will move again? Can you move us to... Ratzig? I don't know. The magic... is fading. Maybe uh, one more. He uh, he goes out into the rose garden, and all the roses are uh, blackened and dying. And there's one rose left that's just sort of wilting uh, rapidly. The petals are falling off, and he he plucks it uh, with his fingers, and he, um, the thorns prick his fingers and cause him to bleed. And, he closes his eyes and blows on the rose and the magic. Just a second, there's an echo in the castles near Leipzig. And then all of the roses are gone. I give him a hug and I say, we'll plant new ones. <laughs> I don't think they'll do very well in this climate. Well, there's some people that I want you to meet. My sister, my one of my sisters, 
I think is still in Amsterdam. I'm not sure. But she goes back and them. forth. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. Come on. Let me show you showed me a world of magic. Let me show you my world now. It might not be as beautiful, but it has its good parts. And you, you still have the journal on you, right? Yeah. Like, the journal is the only thing that I keep. Uh, the journal actually, um, like, bumps against your hand, almost like it's pushing at you. I look at it with eyes going kind of wide, hopefully. Uh, on the, um, the surface, it just says, open me. I open it. And it flips to somewhere in the middle, somewhere that you don't remember actually writing anything down yet in the blank pages. And um, it says, all it says is, thank you. And then there's uh, signatures, each name that you gave to anything in the castle. And each signature is different. A couple of them for pages, pages. A couple of them smudge pages. as I as I cry on them, and I show beast. He starts crying too. Takes a deep breath. I... You were right. They they were people. Well, at least they're in a good place now. He looks back at the castle and he says, "We'll have to, we'll have to fill it up again. It can't be a, just be empty." There are a lot of good people that want to be there with us, but we'll all write them down right here. And I point to Fama. Everybody that ever enters. Right. It's a wonderful idea. And I think now it's the time where I take his hand, we go to the city, and it kind of, a lot of flashbacks as I meet, no flashbacks, like fast forwards as I meet my sisters. As time, I, lapse, time lapse storytelling. Time lapse storytelling, exactly. As I meet my sisters, I show them him, I meet my father again, I kind of catch him with his new girlfriend, I laugh. <laughs> And yeah, and after that comes the big text, the end. Yes, and that is how the guest book was invented. That's how the <laughs> guest book was invented. <laughs> Whoa, that was a pretty intense episode. That was a good episode. I've been, so, I've, so all that was stuff I had planned from like day one when we decided to uh, make it longer than one episode. So it's nice that it all finally came to came together after a month. Yeah, it, change. it really did come out very neatly together. Well, yeah, that's about it for Pinball Storytellers this week. It's been pretty fun. Um, you should shout out and then you want Q&A? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Justin? What's up? Hi guys, I'm Cavalier Guest on Twitch. Um, I haven't been streaming. Uh, check out my YouTube channel. There's a video about why. Just super embarrassing, but it uh, it needed to be done. Um, but I think I'm actually going to start streaming again uh, next week. Uh, I stream mostly Hearthstone and Blackrock Mountains coming out, so it'll be interesting. You get to see me play with new cards and do the uh, do the PVE content, which I'm actually looking forward to a lot because I thought Nax was really good. Uh, so you can check me out on there. Um, I'm also in, uh, I don't even know how many shows I'm going to be in now, because I'm going into a new one uh, with Chucky. I'll oh, let yeah. Chucky talk about that. So, okay, guys. So, Hope the Dragon Queen is going to an intermission adventure. And that means about four weeks of an adventure with new characters, still in the world of Faerun, continuing on this Saturday. Then we have On a Bound, uh, Sunday, normal time. I don't think any, but anything has changed about that yet though things i'm not eh, we'll see on about is still there from what i know um and besides that our new show is going to be starting somewhere in april um the 8th is our projected date the 8th at about 
Well, it's about four, five hours before this time now. Yeah, five hours before this time now. And that's going to be a new D&D show. Uh, it's going to be composed of um, me, Justin, Cram Taco, Distracted Elf, Fuzzy Freaks, and if all works out well, because uh, fuck time zones, yes, um, Neil. Oh, otherwise known as Koibu. So that's gonna be um, that's gonna be what's gonna be happening with the new show, and that's that's all of the D and D stuff going on, on the channel. Three point five engineer is finished, so we finished at exactly thirty episodes, and we did a calculus of how much I played together with that group. I've been playing with them for about a year and something. So we finished that campaign. It was pretty cool. They killed Tiamat. And it was, it was a great episode, so that's about it for me. And we're going to jump into our Q&A in just a couple of minutes. So we'll take a one, two minute break and then jumping right back up. So we're going to start talking about the show and you can just ask us whatever you want to know uh, about the show. If you ask personal questions, we might answer, we might not answer. We're going to answer, sure, we're going to answer uh, stuff related to this. Okay, we'll see you guys in two minutes. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.